All right, so this will be our last video on spherical coordinates. Um, we're going we're gonna to talk about general change of variables over a couple of videos. Um, we don't have time to do it in class this year at least. Maybe we will in future years. Um, but I do want to I do want to give you a few videos on it so you've seen it because um, I think it is an important topic and it's useful to see it at least once in your life plus um, bits and pieces of it will come up later on um, as we move through later material. So we we went through this a little bit in class so we said well, you know we can uh, we can write down this transformation, right? So we can say that, well, we're defining this, this spherical coordinate transformation by taking the, the coordinates x, y, z, the rectangular coordinates, and thinking of them as the result of applying this transformation t, which is defined in R3 with variables rho, phi, theta. And we define this transformation t by the equations rho sine phi cos theta rho sine phi sine theta rho cos phi. Right? And I mentioned that you can you can go ahead and calculate the derivative of this transformation, right? So remember that we can talk about the Jacobian matrix, the derivative of the transformation, this matrix of partial derivatives, right? So the derivative of t, which is still a function of oops, rho, phi, theta. So it's going to be this 3 by 3 derivative, okay, where in the first column you put the rho derivatives, in the second column, you put the phi derivatives. And in the final column, you put the theta derivatives. Right? dz d theta. Okay? So that's this derivative matrix, right? Um, we, we saw this earlier in the course. This came up in the context of applying the chain rule, kind of looking at general chain rule. And we said, you know, if you, if you had a function of x, y, z, right? So if we, if we had some function of, of, let's say, x, y, z, and we wanted to take the derivative of this thing, you know, we're thinking of x, y, z as functions of rho, phi, and theta, right? And we said, hey, you know, you want to take the derivative of this thing with respect to, let's say, phi, then you do uh, df dx, right? dx d phi, df dy, dy, d phi, df dz, dz, d phi, right? We say, yeah, you can do you can do this, right? And we said, well, really. What you're doing here is, is you're, you're doing the, the derivative of, you know, so remember that, that f here, f of x, y, z, right, this is really, we're composing with this t, right, so this is really um, f composed with t, right, as a function of u, v, w, we're just sort of suppressing the u, v, w here. And we said, oh, chain rule says, you know, that you do the derivative of f, you know, and, and you do that in terms of x, y, z, and then you multiply by the derivative of, of t as a function of, I guess, not u, v, w, but um, rho, phi, and theta, right? So rho, phi, theta. And so, and remember that this df dx, this is just, uh, or this df, capital DF is df dx, df dy, um, df dz as a as a row vector, right? Row matrix dt is sitting right here, and you can see that if you take this row and you multiply across, right, times the first column, you get the row derivative. Second column gives you the phi derivative. Third column gives you the theta der theta derivative. So we looked at that a little bit, right? But uh, the other thing we mentioned in class is that. If you think about this matrix, it helps you understand a little bit um, 
how volumes are transformed when you apply this transformation because if I'm over here in say rho phi theta space, right? And I'm at some point in that space and I have a little cube. So I have a, a cube that is spanned by some vectors. So this one here might be say delta rho in say the i direction. Right, and then a delta phi in, let's say, the j direction, and a delta theta in the k direction. You can take those three vectors, and those three vectors, they span a little cube, right? sitting there in, in your rho phi theta space. And then you apply this transformation T, right? So this transformation T comes along and T takes you over to x, y, z space. And over there, this, you know, this vector here, so this, maybe this point ends up, ends up at some point over here, right? And then you have this vector here. So maybe we'll call this vector, say, uh, u, okay? We have this vector kind of corresponding to a changing angle of phi, so it's going to look something probably like, so we have kind of, well, this line segment here, it ends up becoming a, a curve that maybe goes something like that. But then we have the tangent to that curve, which is there. And so maybe that's some vector v. And then finally you have the, the result of doing the theta rotation, which gives you a curve that's maybe going, going this way, right? And so then you have a, a tangent vector for that, right? Maybe I didn't do the best job of choosing those directions. But those three vectors, they're going to span this, this parallel pipette, and you want to know how does the volume change going from here to there, right? Um, here's your, say, W. It looks like those are pointing opposite directions, but that's kind of a, a perspective problem, okay? And, and so we know that the, the volume over here in the x, y, z space is, is just given by computing the, the determinant. In fact, you can work out that u u is going to be what you get if you take this, this dt of rho phi theta and you multiply by delta rho times i, right? With similar results, so for v it's going to be the same thing, but delta phi j, your w, same thing, but you multiply by delta theta and k, right? Um, Multiplying by I100 zero, zero is going to give you, what's it going to give you, right? You put a 100 zero, zero here, it's going to give you the first column, right? Multiplying by J gives you the second column. Multiplying by K gives you the third column. And you can kind of work out how this is going to go. Okay, so that's all well and good. Um, but then you want to know the volume that's spanned by U, V, and W, the volume of this parallel pipette. And it turns out that this volume over here, maybe we call it delta V, right? It's going to be given by the determinant of this dt rho phi theta times, well, you know, these are just scalars, right? So you factor out the scalars, delta rho, delta phi, delta theta. This, uh, this is kind of the general idea, and this is going to work for a general change of variables. We're going to talk about this a bit in the next few videos. For a general change of variables, T, where you're defining X, Y, and Z in, in terms of some other variables, maybe we call them U, V, W. Uh, when you apply this general change of variables and you want to know how does volume get transformed, you know, what is the volume over here in terms of the volume over there, the, the transformation factor is always given by this, this determinant. Um, that determinant is given a name. It's usually called the Jacobian. That's the title here, the Jacobian. Um, so this thing is, is often denoted by, I guess, J for Jacobian. 
uh, named after a guy by the name of Jacoby. Um, and rho phi theta, right? And, and this Jacobian, of course, is a function because we have a, we have a matrix whose entries are functions, right? If you have an, a matrix whose entries are numbers and you take the determinant, you get a number. Um, but if you take the determinant of a matrix with functional entries, you expect to get a function. So what is the function that you get in this case? Um, I did leave myself a lot of space, but let's see what we can do. So the Jacobian is going to be the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. So let's put in those derivatives, OK? Sine phi cos theta, sine phi, sine theta, cos phi. There's the rho derivatives. Now we're going to do the phi derivatives. Rho cos phi cos theta. We're going to do rho cos phi sine theta and minus rho sine phi. And then finally we do the theta derivatives. So we get minus rho um, sine phi sine theta, I hope that fits, um, and then we get rho sine phi cos theta, and uh, well, zero, right, because z doesn't depend on phi. Did that fit? I'm looking over here at my monitor, just barely. Okay, I think we've got that all on camera. Okay, so that's our determinant, and so now Let's see what happens when we compute. So 3 by 3 determinant, you got to do cofactor expansion. You decide to expand along whatever row or column you feel like. Um, I'm going to choose to expand along row 3 because there's a 0. So let's see what I get if I expand along row 3. Well, let's do it in blue. I'm going to get cos phi times the following 2 by 2 determinant. Uh, rho cos phi cos theta minus rho sine phi sine theta rho cos phi sine theta rho sine phi cos theta, right? Um, Mine, remember there's a sign change, right? It goes plus, minus, plus. So it's minus, but there's another minus sign. So we get plus rho sine phi times. If we delete the middle row, we've got sine phi cos theta, sine phi, sine theta, minus rho sine phi sine theta, rho, sine, phi, cos theta. Let's do the two by twos. Cos phi times. Um, well, rho squared, right? Rho times rho, rho times rho. So let's take the rho squared out. Um, also, Notice that there's a cos phi sine phi, cos phi sine phi. So there's a cos phi sine phi that's going to be common. And then, let's see, cos theta times cos theta, so cos squared theta, minus for this diagonal, minus minus becomes plus, plus sine squared. Okay. And then we have rho sine phi times what's common. There's going to be a rho in both factors. Take out the rho. Um, sine phi, sine phi, sine phi. There's a sine phi everywhere, right? That's a common factor. You can factor it right out of the determinant. Rho sine phi. Okay. So far, so good. Times. What else? Cos theta, cos theta, 
cos squared theta minus minus becomes plus ah, plus sine squared theta. And most of us probably remember that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta simplifies to 1. So what are we left with? We're left with um, rho squared sine phi cos squared phi. Oh, I messed up here, right? Not just sine phi, sine phi sine times sine phi, sine squared phi. Aha. Um, so rho squared sine phi cos squared phi plus rho squared sine phi sine squared phi. Cos squared plus sine squared, also 1, right? Once you factor out the rho squared sine phi. And there it is, rho squared sine phi, as promised, right? This, uh, this volume factor that you get in the spherical coordinate transformation, it pops out once you, uh, once you make your way through this determinant. All right, we'll stop here. Uh, we're going to do a couple of videos on general change of variables, and then we're going to be moving on to vector calculus.